welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux and open source. I am Vin Stone, here in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, joined every week by the cold, chilly Eskimo in uh, L.A., because it's one degree yeah. colder in this city <laughs> of angels than it is. That's amazing. Coast to coast, man. But telling us all to get stuffed, the man on the Isle of Britannia, at a... <laughs> I don't know what I chili. It's four, four, four Celsius. <laughs> <laughs> it's the coldest. Just gotta four deal. whole Celsius. Yeah, just, uh, when you get to four, you're just dealing with it, man. You're like, all right, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'll take it. <laughs> oh man, uh, we are live. Hey everyone at home watching us. Uh, we got a gang of stuff to get into this week. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's jump right into it. A uh, quick recap since last week. One thing we did learn. Rick Sanchez <laughs> runs Debian. Uh, yeah. Yep. More to <laughs> and the... he has an AMD 37QX, 3700QX. Quantum computer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think it was brought up to a better point. His, his toilet, his loo, runs Debian. This, this is just <laughs> for his potty. Mm -hmm. At, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, he must have a bidet. <laughs> Dude, I was thinking, he's got his own planet. So I was playing yeah. around like last night and burnt an inordinate <laughs> amount of time due to this stupid little red controller um, mm -hmm. that I just bought to complete the collection. Right? I was like, well, I guess I can get one of these. <laughs> uh, last week, I told everyone I'd set up Curl 5.3. 11 whatnot on Debian 10 and just some audio stuff I was playing with. Everything's running swimmingly. No issues. I, for some time now, last night, it's like, I need to try this with the particular game we're going to be doing this week. I want to see if it works. Couldn't get it to connect. It would link and down and uplink would just sit there and hammering everything i'm like okay it's like permissions messed up in blue so that's learned a lot about usb as one does and bluetooth <laughs> finally googled it it's like oh yes this is a bug <laughs> since october Jeez. uh yeah i i talked about that bug i don't on this show <laughs> no attention to you yeah. whatsoever in one way or the other it's a buzzing noise and so yeah i just uh i didn't even roll back to the car I, I, latest 419 stable boop and connect and like whatever joe what's new with you yeah. anything nice. more exciting no. than that <laughs> yes yes so last saturday was another linux gamecast first uh, me steve matthew and alan met atomic from chat for the first time and we had a great time a, a really nice chat over a mexican dinner and a nice stroll along the redondo beach pier and it was it, it was nice because atomic i've been talking to in chat for years and it, you know, it's to to meet him in person was awesome, and um, he's just like he's just like I I knew he would be because we've been friends <laughs> online, so <laughs> it was great. And you lost him at one point because I got a message from Alan on uh, Discord. It's like, did anyone see uh, where Strider and uh, yes. Atomic went? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were just way ahead of us. <laughs> so. Oh. That, on the way back. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw the horrifying, horrifying. It's like, oh man, every time I see that, <laughs> like group pictures, it's like, please, nothing go wrong. Because <laughs> that, I, 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 the only thing that goes through my mind is the like headline in the local newspaper. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm glad everything worked out and everyone enjoyed yeah. themselves. Yeah, um, it worked out perfect. <laughs> Good news, everyone. Mm -hmm. Linux has some new malware to contend mm -hmm. with. Yes. <laughs> Linux yeah. and Windows users have been targeted with a new ACB, mm. well, AC backdoor malware. Mm -hmm. uh, researchers have discovered a new multi-platform backdoor that infects Windows and Linux systems, allowing the attackers to run malicious code. It's never good, happy, fun code, is it? And binaries no. on compromised machines. It's called AC backdoors, developed by a threat group with experience. Set it up. So they track this down. Uh, infection vectors. How do I get it? Well, no one really knows. <laughs> this is um, kind of a... Common... I mean, on 
on Windows, it's just uh, Internet Explorer and Flash. Flash. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could have just said it's Windows, man. I... <laughs> yeah. But yeah, apparently the Windows variant is actually ported from the Linux variant. But mm -hmm. yeah, the Linux variant, everyone's going, yeah, we don't know what the attack vector on that one is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ven, oh, you go. I have theories. <laughs> Seriously, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I can think of exactly not one, uh, but two <laughs> attack vectors that only the dumbest of dumbs, the morons themselves, would fall for. Yes, that's right. I'm looking at you, game thieves. I'm also looking at you, Cody users. Not regular, co you know the Cody users I'm talking about, those other ones. <laughs> Yes, the ones that install that Cody repo and just give it the root password, yes. Ah, oh, well, we, we were talking in the pre-show before we went live, and it's like, this is taking advantage of Windows-like behavior. It's like, I'm going to go text and steal the stuff, and I'll just double-click, oh, I just got to put a password yeah. in, and my game supply. Yep. And I'm like, geez, because... No one else. I, I, I would love the ideas. Alan, you brought up a good point. At least uh, Linux is starting to, it's nowhere near there, but we're starting to maybe achieve parity with malware that <laughs> Windows and Mac, you know. I mean, yeah, it, it is still harder to like get the yeah. malware in, which is why we're always going, okay, that's all very well and good, but the moment the malware is on a system, the problem is already there. So what's the attack vector? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the end user. Always the end user. Yeah. Yeah. On <laughs> Linux, it's always the user. <laughs> Man, I don't know. That's definitely a thing. So it turns out Debian 10 is uh, not powering only lose it it's also got a chromebook or two up its uh, pipe yep mm -hmm. and uh every single uh chromebook that has uh linux apps enabled uh will be uh of well, or will have Debian 10 available very, very soon. Uh, one of the things that the article on XDA doesn't mention is like, okay, so we know that people are already running Debian 10 or Debian Wait 9. A minute. So you can get the Arch or the Chromebook. I love yes, this. you. Yes. There, there is a script that you just replace everything Debian with everything Arch. It's yeah, um, but yeah, you can run a very similar script that already does the update for you. But there is no official way to update from the base Debian nine to Debian ten. So that remains to be seen. It's like, how are you gonna do it? But it does uh, bring some new things. The one that kind of jumped out at me is like, oh, you can sideload Android apps without mm -hmm. enabling um, developer mode. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, you could just load up that APK. Nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so last week we talked about Chrome OS 78 rolling out, and now Chrome OS 80 is expected to be released for all users in February 2020. Yep. And which is really, that's actually very quick. And having the latest stable release of Debian 10 Buster will allow the use of newer software, of course. And uh, <laughs> it, it might be a little stale, but not too stale. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and with the Crostini GPU support now being enabled by default with Chrome OS 78, using graphics applications like the GIMP and Blender should be a much smoother experience. Mm -hmm. So that'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> It, it also helps that uh, with Debian 10, you get a newer version of Mesa, which means better performance. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is kind of beautiful. The Debian train keeps on rolling, though. 10. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's only slightly <laughs> stale, he says, because he did it. The update. I was like, uh-oh, what's this? When you see those repo names change, it's like, you need to agree. It's... It, not, nothing, like, terribly fun to report. Uh, for the most part, it's just a gang of security updates. I... Did it on this box we're on right now, the thread booper. Nothing. No big hangups. Nothing changed, which is good. This is what you look for in a Debian system. You're like, mm -hmm. hey, nothing broke. And, uh, you know, just it's security stuff. We got some GLib improvements. Uh, LibreOffice, which thanks for reminding me that mm -hmm. was installed. I uninstalled that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in curses, Xlibs. Uh, oh, Pickard, not Picard. 
Uh, that's a <laughs> thing. And, oh, right. There was some stuff with System D, but I didn't look at that because I don't like System D. I just, I just um, came to the realization that it's a thing now and just going to deal with it. But hey. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, the one yeah. thing it didn't fix was my Bluetooth issue with that PS4 <laughs> controller and kernel. No, oh. no, it is System D. It is very low level, but not kernel level. Arr. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So one of the fixes was in the Debian installer uh, fixed unreadable fonts on high DPI displays in netbook images booted with EFI. And actually, this is really good because I've occasionally had weird Debian installer unreadable, corrupt, or just too small fonts to read on some displays when using EFI and netboot. It's been an issue for forever. You find that one one monitor it's not happy with. <laughs> so. yeah. Until you say that these two boxes you near are identical. I mean, down to... Yeah. I mean, to the monitors plugged into them. <laughs> I see this issue when I start them up. Some of them will be like, I know uh, Pedro and I have talked yeah. about this. It's like, you ever accidentally yeah. drop the console on a UHD monitor and it maintained that 3840 by 2160? And you're like, oh boy, <laughs> yeah. right. Let's get up and close and personal. And you know, some it'll be like your regular, what you would expect, you know, Visa font and the other one would be like mm -hmm. nope mice type so yeah that's good to <laughs> yeah. see that they fix that for people right? <laughs> yes <laughs> consistency I, hey man yeah. you gotta think about it man you, you want consistency in that two to 2.3 seconds it takes to um get into x for hitting yeah. the power button yeah Ah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the old days, I used to use like magnif. I always had a magnifying glass next to my computers <laughs> for these Debian screens. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I I thing. can tell that I'm using uh, Ubuntu now because after I uh, installed the NVIDIA drivers, not the ones that came pre-installed, but I did the install. Um, the Plymouth animation went from being all nice and 1080p mm -hmm. to being like 640 by 480. It's like, oh, God damn it, NVIDIA. Still that issue? Really? Language. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I suppose the G word does qualify. <laughs> you know what? I'm, 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 I'm going to bleep that out. Oh. <laughs> uh, closing the G damn door. <laughs> oh, shut the front door. Come on. <laughs> All right. So uh, this one is uh, Prophet Internet Axe. Or no, it's Brave. No, it's Brave. <laughs> I scrolled down too far. My bad. <laughs> PIA is coming very soon. <laughs> yes. So this is. Uh, one of my favorite Chromium-based web browsers, Brave, is now out of beta and the first stable releases here. Yay! And um, I use this privacy-focused web browser on many of my computers and Android as well. And um, what's nice is Brave not only has the added benefit of blocking ads and trackers, but loads web pages faster as a result. And I definitely noticed the speed difference on my Android phone too. It makes a big difference. And I've been using it since it came out. I'm, I, I think Ven and, and Pedro have too as well. So this is I've uh, toyed with really it. Good. I don't really use it. <laughs> <laughs> I forget exactly what it did that sent me off that made me stop using it. Um, mm. there, there was some dumb thing. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, and it really wasn't Brave's fault to the point of it was I was using it mm. for show notes. Mm -hmm. And mm. it was like complaining about being an outdated browser or something like that with Google Docs. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you know mm. what? You're, you're Chromium now. And uh, 1.0. That's good option. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it naturally, mm. it's going to pale in comparison to the majesty that will be Edge. Yeah. <laughs> Remains to be seen when that comes yeah. to Linux, how the two will compare. <laughs> Come on, man. You're going to be using Edge like you watch a train wreck. You're like, we've got to see. Let's... Oh, I will try it. Oh, I will absolutely try oh, it. Let's live stream it. Yes. Man. Let's just watch it eat Oh, poo. yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it comes out on a Tuesday, that's what I'm live streaming. <laughs> it's going to be a whole different kind of game. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to find a way to ship flush with it. 
Oh, I mean, yes. Chrome was shipping <laughs> their version of Pepper Flash Pepper. for a while, so... Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but on by default. Come on, it's Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Anyway, uh, mm -hmm. you yeah. have uh, something about... It, it's not a PITA, but just a regular PIA, the old school. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and hopefully it won't become a PITA uh, because, well, uh, private internet access, uh, they put out a blog post. It's like Bellum Omnium Contra Omnis, uh, the war of all against all. And it's basically them saying, okay, we ran into a bunch of stuff and we needed to do something and we needed more money. So we started talking to people and people were like, yeah, we can give you money, but you'll have to share the logs. And they're like, we don't keep logs. Oh, then you're not getting money. Until, eventually, uh, they found Cape Technologies, which was willing to give them money without the logs. So, they bought them. They, the Cape Technologies bought PIA and so the parent the company. What did they want? Like a twig? Maybe a branch? Or, or some powdered toast, for all I care. Uh, <laughs> no, the... <laughs> to interrupt you, the real question is, what's this got to do with Linux, Pedro? This is just a VPN. Oh, yes. So if you don't know uh, about PIA specifically, they uh, one of the things that they support is OpenVPN, so you can literally use it on any distribution. Uh, they saved Krita from back uh -huh. uh, bankruptcy after they did that little snafu with the taxes. These were the people who bailed them out. Uh, they support a bunch of FOSS projects. I personally use it, and uh, actually one of the FOSS, uh, the projects that they support, and I didn't know, was um, Freenode. Because as it turns out, the parent company of uh, PIA, LTMI, or London Technologies Media Inc., uh, they own Freenode. Hmm. The, the mm -hmm. guy who runs Freenode uh, is uh, a um, an employee of private internet access. And uh, yeah, with this purchase, it was like the total value of the purchase was like something 130 something million, which isn't all that much in, you know, company money. But... That basically got them a bunch of credit right there. It covered their 32 million debt that they had accumulated, which is nice. That's very nice. And um, yeah, the, they were the one company uh, out there that was willing to fund them and basically buy them out without asking for the logs. So yeah, uh, I'm willing to wait and see what they do. Mm. Mostly because I already gave them money, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and also they sponsor the southern california linux expo and have a very very large presence yes. there so it's awesome <laughs> and um another cool thing is they are rolling out a new search engine called private search which cryptographically protects your privacy and it is available now for testing and i was playing with it yesterday and it, and it works very well and also they're creating a new web browser based on Chromium called Libra Browser for Linux, Mac, and Windows that protects your privacy. So, and, and that's not out yet, but I am looking forward to, to playing around with it. Really cool. Very, very cool. Our next yes. bit of is something that's near and dear to sleepless nights in university. Yes. Writing a user space <laughs> USB driver. For an abandoned device. Mmm, doesn't that sound like fun? You know, 100% as someone who was trying to reverse engineer the QuickCam VC back in billions of you. Mm. Remember that thing, Parallel Port? We didn't have this fancy mm -hmm. universal serial. Yes. <laughs> Nay, <laughs> this speaks to me, or that part of me. It's like, oh, let's build a logic analyzer, and I never got it to work right. No harm, no foul. But real quick. This dude picked up some cheap VGA to USB capture devices off the eBay. He's like, hey, man, let's see if they work. I've been there. I know those feels. And um, it turns out that binary drivers did exist, but they only worked up to like kernel 419. So, or before that. So mm -hmm. kernel, you know, 5X series, stuff like that. Not going to fly. Mm -hmm. So he was like looking at it. He's like, hey, man, I think this is basically an FPGA on a stick. So our intrepid hero got to work. And after much USB snooping, a few typos were had, which resulted in it kind of working. It was like, uh-oh, neat. Then you discovered that uh, there was an SDK for the Windows version that kind of sped everything up. And we can scroll real quick all the way down. Look, he made 
That's the typo. Blink the LED. Yep. <laughs> that, the typo yep. caused that. And that gives you hope. It might be false hope, but it keeps you going. Yep. Yeah. This is just a very, very fun read. And you can see, oh, take one, something. <laughs> take two. Oh, oh. There okay. We go. Is it the, them some letters? Yeah, right. <laughs> the, the happiness that one gets from pulling off something like this is amazing. I think it's great. And of course, the driver for this little critter is now available on GitHub, Yay. which is great <laughs> and it's neat. But mm -hmm. what I want to say, what's the moral of the story? Let me tell you, because it's a <laughs> universal one. Because the yes. quickest <laughs> way to get Linux drivers for your device is A, quite simply, don't release them. Hi, Sony. Um, or <laughs> in this case... Stop providing updates for them. Then you're going to end up with open source drivers for you. And then people are going to take your open source drivers and make them work on devices that you never planned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is a story that happens over and over and over again. But you know something yeah. like yeah. this. This is an older device. If you're looking for like a VGA capture device, I wouldn't even know where to start, but hey, man, you know, you could definitely burn a weekend with this and uh, get it up and running. Now, just pick one up if you, I don't know what you would capture with the VG. If you really need to capture your um, Dreamcast. <laughs> your T42 ThinkPad for some reason. Aww, yeah. <laughs> or your older computers. <laughs> Sweet four by three goodness, man. So good on you, man. Jill, you said something about the old Hollywood MP2 yeah. decoders that yeah. never worked right. Yes, exactly. So this this reminds me when I was working on getting one of my real magic Hollywood Plus MPEG-2 decoder cards working on Linux. Uh, this was in the days when FFmpeg and video for Linux was definitely in its infancy. But I I did get get that working. It, it took a couple months, but I finally got it to work. So um, yeah, and you could play around with really them. That was really great. Work. If you kids out there are like, what are you talking about? Well, the computers were too slow if you were trying to play a DVD. And also those exactly. Hollywood cards, <laughs> yep. they came yeah. with everything. You bought the wrong magazine. You're like, what is this? And it was one of those Hollywood cards, man. They were everywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. fortunately, like 20 seconds after I just like, this isn't worth it. I've got a laptop that was fast enough. To play DVDs yeah. without a separation. Yeah. Get yeah, off was... my lawn. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Open source radio. What's this about? Uh oh. Open source dot com. Mm -hmm. Uh Yukon, which is Kanukistan, believe it or not. Um, this kind of walks through how this dude like set up his own bit of kit. Um, the open broadcaster studio. I mean, the source code's out, it's under AGBL. V3, he needed to set something up and he had to do it himself, as one does. Um, Radio Rob Hopkins, is that, what do you want to go with that? Taggish? Taggish? Yeah, yes. Tag Tag um, but no, I mean, he stuck this together for a community powered, low powered FM station. And I think this is really neat. So this is going to like automate setting things up. I mean, he started playing this with like cassettes and stuff like that. But this is something, since it's under AGPL v3, it's open source. You can play it with yourself. You can even put it on a Pi, and there's no mandatory paid subscriptions, unlock codes, no dongles or anything like that. And a station in Kentucky even, like, sponsored the development of this for doing, like, a royalty reporting system that was also mm -hmm. released as open source. So we're looking at the OB player. Woohoo! If you want to play with this. And, um... Radio's not my jam, even though that's what I do for a living. But hey, man, if you want to play the home game, yes, maybe. Joe, what do you think? Yeah. Well, you know, one of the sad things here, and having been worked at several radio stations, and this is a truism, here in the U.S., we can't use open source software for emergency alert systems like you can in Canada and the rest of the world. But instead, we have to pay, you know, have to buy expensive proprietary boxes from U.S. manufacturers that are certified by the Federal Communications Commission. And that's always the issue here in the U.S. is, is the FCC. So, so some, you know, we can use open source up to a certain point, but not for the whole uh, chain of broadcasting, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. <laughs> but yeah, if you don't live in the U.S. and you're already paying a broadcast license for some reason, and you th you th mm -hmm. you're thinking, well, I'm not actually doing anything with it, 
Give me a sec. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Raspberry Pi. Done. <laughs> yeah. That's great. There is open source software for, you know, managing playlists and, and that kind of oh, yeah. thing. That, that so that's been available like on Linux. Setting that up. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> it's really great when somebody just creates something out of like a need and you give it away. Which yeah. yes. It's amazing. It's all part of the community. And hey man, come on. I, I don't know what the kids <laughs> these days want to do, but you know, start start your own one watt. Uh, FM station with a Raspberry Pi. It's, it's completely yeah. Horrible. That like people in your yeah. building can complain that you're interfering with their radio station. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, to absolutely no one's surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, of course, uh, we've been talking about this here on LWW. The top 500 supercomputers in the world run Linux. And yeah, uh, but what's really wonderful is they have reached the average speed of 1.14 petaflops. Uh, that's amazing. Yes, that's a lot Linux of flops. Makes, <laughs> <laughs> Linux makes <laughs> makes the supercomputers run faster and faster every um, every every day. Actually, new innovations. <laughs> so, in the top spot is the IBM built supercomputer, the Oak Ridge National Laboratory Summit System, which is amazing, which clocks in at 148.6 petaflops, and mm -hmm. it uses the Power Nine CPUs and NVIDIA Tesla. Uh, V100 GPOs, yeah. yeah that yep, we've you can about tell before. that uh, <laughs> IBM's were the one uh, who built that particular computer because it's yeah. the only one running Power Nine. <laughs> yeah, well, except for the the second place, the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory's Sierra System supercomputer also uses the Power Nine CPUs, which was also and, built uh, by IBM. Yes, exactly, and clocks in at ninety four point six petaflops. <laughs> yes. Uh, IBM's always, you know, they've been the king of this for years, so since the very beginning. <laughs> the kind of looking at it, it, it's always interesting when your desktop operating system can moonlight at exascale proportions. Um, mm -hmm. But that's okay. <laughs> Don't worry, Linux is stupid. Keep clicking on your next buttons, Windows desktop yeah. experts. Uh, <laughs> and you know even in desktop land this is a trend that is very much on display because if exactly. say you yeah. don't pay attention to the petaflops and instead you go look at like the geekbench uh result browser if you sort like by the same cpu and gpu and you just sort mm -hmm. by the highest scores it's always a linux score at the top the, you can see like the overclocked Windows scores inching very close to it or sometimes mm -hmm. even going above <laughs> it, but it's usually Linux at the top. Yeah. <laughs> well, if, if you're going to benchmark something, it's probably a good idea to use Linux because you could actually control the variables. Everything? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I see benchmarks done, you know, I understand why you'd have to do it for Windows. Like we're trying to do it for gaming benchmarks, like, but... Talk about RNG simulator on Windows. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't know what's running in the back. Well, I can open this up and like, uh, and I mean, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, on this list, the one that uh, surprised me was number five. It's a yeah. Dell. Yes, <laughs> that was cool. What, what surprised yeah. me were the Xeon Platinums. I'm like that's where they went. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> ridiculous pricing, but. Um, not every Linux PC has to be a supercomputer. No, no, it does not. Mm -hmm. In fact, Linux is that uh, yeah <laughs> variable. No, not variable. Uh, malleable. Some flexible. word that ends in double. <laughs> flexible. Yes, very good. <laughs> this one is uh, the popcorn computer. It is. Uh, if you've ever seen a Nintendo 2DS, that was the first thing that jumped to my mind. Is like, oh yeah, no, oh, that is a Nintendo 2DS with like. It's if you took one of the old um, uh, Blackberries and you stretched it out a little bit to have a full on like full HD screen, you'd get a popcorn computer. And right now the Pocket PC, as they're selling it, is, um, well, it's up for consideration. You can put your email address in the little notify me tab and they say that by the time it comes out, it'll be around 200 local wet stinky mm -hmm. currencies which 
Look, it's a toy. Let's be honest. They have a long-range communication uh, thing, the Laura, as they call it. Should have called it the which... Lorca. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Star Trek. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah. 200 wet sticky caches for a toy. Yeah, at that point, I would rather pay for the Pinebook Pro. <laughs> I... I would have to see something that was not a 3D render. A, I, I think that's yes. very much yeah. in the, yeah. like, mm, okay, maybe I'll play around with that, like a four-inch screen. Now, spec-wise, yes. I was just getting my first good look at it when we were scrolling through the notes, and I was like, that's only slightly slower than my router. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they compare yeah. it to the um, Nexus 5, and that's not really a comparison you want to be making uh, in 2019. But I, I think the <laughs> sell on this is the being able, you know, open communications and a nice, like, TSA acceptance factor on the packaging. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. No. If it, if it does look this good when it's an actual device and not just a render, that yes. will be very neat. It'll look like a toy, but it'll be very neat. <laughs> well. Yeah. It'll be some. Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> oh, well, my only hesitation is the silicon-based keyboard, which I wish they weren't using silicon for the keyboard. <laughs> Never been a fan <laughs> of these ever since the rubbery keys of the ZX Spectrum. I'm hoping they're a little harder. <laughs> <laughs> you know. yeah, seriously, <laughs> what do you want? MX Reds? You want click, 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 click. <laughs> No, but just just the uh, you know, AB, ABS. Uh, or, the or Apple classic, Butterfly classic. keyboard. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> that rubbery effect I've, I've never cared for on keyboards. But yeah, like as uh, Pedro and Ben were saying, if if this design holds out, it's it's really beautiful. And, and the glowing key, uh, the the backlit keyboard looks really nice too. See, there, there's your, there, there's a hard <laughs> It was like, do you want your glowy keyboard or do yes. you want a good keyboard? Pick one. I want both. <laughs> yeah, I they're going to have to find keyboard. a way. Yeah, clicky <laughs> keyboard that glows on that teeny tiny little five inch across. Yeah, yeah no, no. <laughs> uh, and but it looks again, beautiful. <laughs> If they can deliver that at one ninety nine, <laughs> that is yeah. you no. Know, granted, it's at the very edge of like, yeah, I might just pick one up to play with, but it's still within the realm, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a sub two hundred dollars. Yeah. Is like, yeah, I might buy that to play. It's not like, well, I'm not. You know, something like the Pirate Two, which is going to be like four or five hundred bucks. You're like, yeah, no, nope, yeah, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> um, more power to it, but you know, yeah, think that out. It's something to keep an eye on. Speaking of things I had to keep an eye on, this showed up in the show notes. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, uh, why is this in the show notes? 404, page not found. <laughs> it's a canonical. So I had to investigate. <clears throat> to which I went to the Google cache. And it's like, oh, I took Google compare. Who put this in the show notes? It wasn't me. I, it might have been me. Might have been you. All right. Yeah. I, yes. I, yeah, uh, I don't think I did. This was a post about yeah, a probably me. comparison between <laughs> Snap the snap and the flat pack formats. And it's like, oh, well, I kind of want to read that. And, you know, <laughs> I read over it and I'm like, yeah, that seems fine. I don't see yep. the. And um, uh, I put it in the show notes because it, it was like, uh, okay. So they actually say we have a hundred and something uh, snaps and flat packs currently only has like 40 or 30 something. Um, so, yeah, flat packs are a little bit lacking in that respect but the first thing that i saw when i saw this is like oh canonical is tooting their own horn again okay let's go through it's like all right that's not bad that's why it ended up in the show notes so mm -hmm. yeah and then the article got pulled so i'm yes. thinking <laughs> someone pointed out to canonical that they were tooting their own horn and they didn't like it why do you have a problem with that like <laughs> <laughs> this is what I don't understand. They're like, hey, man, we made a technology that is pretty good. Pedro, you're the problem with the internet, Pedro. It's like, ah, oh, you're touting your own horn. Like, but it's a really cool thing we made. I no. am. <laughs> no, no, quit touting your own horn. No. <laughs> if anything, oh. uh, I am the representation of the typical internet uh, person who Listen, often okay. doesn't know what they're talking about. First but, off, yeah. Pedro, you're the only one here. Well, no, both of you are running Humboldt, so never mind. 
<laughs> well, so were you it, for the longest <laughs> time. <laughs> oh, I still have it on a box back here. Jack yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I think it was actually a really good article. And, and initially, I couldn't read it because of the 404 issue. But uh, yesterday, I was able to take a look at it with the other links. And, um, you know, it, it, it it's true. Snaps are more flexible and can be installed on many more architectures and flat packs, including PowerPC64, IBM mainframe, S390X, and older i386. And... Yeah. You know, in doing so, Snap supports server side and in, in the Internet of Things. So it is more flexible than flat packs. But flat packs are nice because they they use um, um, URLs and servers to to get all their uh, packages. So that's that's it's kind of nice. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and honestly, uh, I my favorite containerized format is still app image. I still love the app images better. <laughs> app images work, but when you're looking yeah. to like deploying something, you know, especially yeah. like this works on everything <laughs> across you know racks and racks, and yeah. racks yeah. and stuff. This makes sense. Yeah. The like, you know, Snap's got a lot of negative funk on it from everyone because it's. Like, let's just be honest, it's from Canonical. And you're like, yeah, that thing, mm -hmm. the... They didn't help, mm -hmm. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> but there's nothing, like, wrong with it. Yes, there's legitimate arguments to be made of, like, oh, it's got a proprietary backend. True, but if you're using it, you know, in your company to deploy something, uh, yeah. probably not going, mm -hmm. well, that's not open source enough for me. Yeah, no, you're uh, so does that uh, support license we're paying actually pay for fixing that? Okay, then go fix that. Yeah. <laughs> go do thing. Yeah. Yeah, and here are the numbers. It's like 679 applications in the flat packs and 2632 excluding duplicates and test snaps. So, yeah, that's a significant difference, I think. Mm -hmm. I personally, I like flat packs. I would very mm -hmm. much like to use flat packs whenever I see something is like, oh, I can build that from source, or let's go see if there's a flat pack. Yeah. <laughs> there's always a flat pack. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have Canonical, they're doing good work with developing Snap, and, you know, Red Hat and yeah. IBM, they're uh, doing the flat packs. And, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, Red Hat, IBM has better people. But, um, yep. They, oh no we have two choices how about a third give me a fourth choice i'm not steam oh, yeah the steam there you, go. you can containers <laughs> the name spaces yeah. everything yeah. you, know, you say that as a joke old man ben but you're like yeah you know could we yeah. camp on steam i can you know keep my stuff updated and portable that'd be kind of fun um that's neat good work canonical put it back up but let people they're read awesome it. Yeah, yeah. it's a really look, good article. We said nice mm -hmm. things, but we also said some things that weren't exactly nice because that's reality. And I know everyone's like, no, all or nothing, but that's not how the world no. works. Preserving yeah. open source software for future generations. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I was excited about this uh, article, This uh, what's going on here. So, wow. So, okay, when we, we, we talked about the post-apocalyptic Linux distribution, Collapse OS, two weeks ago. I talked about the Long Now Foundation and the 10,000-year clock as a good example of creating technology that is preserved for the future. And now I... I I must have had a good prediction, <laughs> but because now GitHub has created the GitHub Archive Program, which is formed to preserve open source software for future generations, and is teaming up with the Long Now Foundation, the Internet Archive, the Software Heritage Foundation, Arctic World Archive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And one of the reasons is, you know, bit rot on hard drives, SSDs, and CDs, and um, all our storage uh, mediums only last for a few decades, sadly. So the GitHub archive program will store multiple copies of the software on various storage mediums across different locations and data formats. And uh, so uh, one of the cool things is if you get your code into the Git GitHub Arctic Code Vault by February 2nd, 2020, it's, ah, they were going gonna, for the palindrome. Clever. <laughs> yes, yes. It's 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 going to become a very long-term archive designed to last at least a thousand years. 
So for all those who have have projects on GitHub, uh, it's it's going to be saved for. So we're going <laughs> to save this in the Arctic. Years. All right. So are they going before yeah. they before they <laughs> store the code? Are they going to teach it how to swim and give it little floaties? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or they're going to finally find that land mass uh, underneath Antarctica, and oh, that's yeah, where they're yeah, going yeah. to bury it. Yeah, when yeah, yeah the, the Atlantis <laughs> lands back, you know, after yep. the Zetans. Yeah, okay. Um, but... <laughs> You yeah. know, uh, I saw like uh, Jill sort of buried the lead there because uh, in her show notes is like Microsoft Research. It's like, yeah, I hope that Microsoft's <laughs> involvement is mostly monetary because when it comes to keeping data, Microsoft isn't very good at that. Just look at the yeah. 1903 update and how they were so very happy to delete people's entire home folder. Just <laughs> no, man. Very you're, true. You're going to get to the vault, <laughs> do the handprint, the retinal scan, Clippy's going to pop up, and you're like, nope. And it's never going to be I see you're trying again. to get into the vault. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought of another positive. I thought of another positive is, is if by uh, February of next year, uh, Microsoft Windows isn't open sourced, it's not going to be <laughs> archived. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, ah, they own GitHub. Fun. They can do whatever they yeah. want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing of value. No, Most I know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're about to get into a slice of pie. But first, we want to thank all the beautiful people who are making this show possible because you are awesome. You melt our face off each and every mm -hmm. week uh, by supporting our nonsense through Patreon, LibraPay. Buying our merch. We got the PayPal's. We got wish lists yeah. from Studio Jordan, Pedro, Jill. We even take magic internet money, keeping us loud, live, independent, and commercial free. And we get to come hang out with you. Uh, if you want to join us, we'd like you to become a Patreon. Then you get access to an extra hour of our content each and every week. You get to hop in our Discord and you get to see pictures of Jill posting uh, yeah. with randos that she met on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and uh, our chat room. You can hop in with our pre-pre super show. We got a gang. We, we we try to entice you to become a Patreon with a bunch of little um, um bonus bonus sodas. But uh that's awesome. If not, could you share our show? That'd be brilliant. Uh be our marketing department. It is a little bit terrifying spreading that distortion. Mm -hmm. But Joe, we got two people, two brand Yay! new shiny yes. Patreons to think this week. Yeah, we have James. I even to remember thank. to put your name in the credits. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so thank you, James, and also to Ruben. I think this is a Ruben I may know, but but this is awesome. I don't know. Did <laughs> you try you to so eat much. it? Were you like? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I don't like Ruben sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. What's a losing sandwich is like a pizza that's gone horribly wrong, isn't it? Uh, you know, I don't uh. even know. I know, I just don't like it. <laughs> is it one of those that barely qualifies as a sandwich? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> just got an issue if the food touches. Yeah, yeah I do, kind of. <laughs> I don't know how she drinks milkshakes. <laughs> ah. <All right. laughs> Let's get into a slice of pie. Well, only one this week. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and it certainly brought all the boys to the yard. Mm -hmm. That's a stretch. So, uh, Music okay. reference. Come on. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was... Yeah. So this is the Raspberry Pi video box. It's a great way to repurpose old pies and thumb drives as a super simple to use media box. And the creator of this project set this up to endlessly play videos off thumb drives, especially older shows like Seinfeld. And just to kind of play them, you know, in random order, like I would, you know, Star Trek. I like Trek this or... universe that I'm stuck in. Where everyone has one of those transparent USB cables somewhere. Just yes. go look. You, you have one. It, oh, I they have were one. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Those were everywhere <laughs> in the 90s and early 2000s. <laughs> and, and the glowing ones, too. But it, anyways, um, it's... A really simple to use series of scripts that you that you load when Raspbian boots, and it will find the flash drive and and play the MP4s, or was MP4s and and AVIs <laughs> AVIs. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. It, um, so each flash drive, uh, the uh, author uh, set up to be a different topic for each flash drive. So you can stick it in and uh, play the videos randomly on there. And, yep. you know, I would definitely use this to uh, play Star Trek. Torture some of my favorite like, yeah, movies. Yeah, play Star Trek. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah play Star Trek out of order. <laughs> See what <Yeah>. happens. <laughs> 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 but yeah, one of the things that I like uh, about this project is that he actually put up his teeny tiny little script. Very uh, small, very mm -hmm. condensed, very easy to understand. And mm -hmm. you basically, you can point, say, instead of media username, like media pie in this case, you could say point it at an NFS mount or an FTP mount or... You could literally make it play, just use a different player and make it play music instead. Did yes. <laughs> yeah, th th this is uh, this is kind of like a uh, unplugged old school version of what I'd like to call Netflix. Because let's face it, man. I mean, you could just put like Stargate SG One on loop, and I'm like, that's the same difference. Yeah, yeah, or Doctor <laughs> Who or something like that. Right and you on. can just remove the shuffle uh, bit, yeah. So it doesn't <laughs> shuffle, and it actually plays them in whatever order they happen to be. Uh, it's it uses iname, so yeah, mm. case insensitive name uh, file names. Mm -hmm. See, now I'm just thinking about the most infuriating things I could come up with to <laughs> force someone. I mean, uh, share with someone out of order. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, if you have any Star Trek's those, a good uh, one. Yeah, Star Trek. Yes. Uh, yeah, I can bounce back and forth with that. <laughs> want to tell us uh, you've got something that you want to share with us out of order, in order, side order. Hey, man. <laughs> How can they do that, Pedro? You can even do upside down text if you feel like copy pasting everything. You could go to linuxgamecast.com, hit the contact button, and fill it out the form. Make sure the show that you send to is, of course, LWDW. You can also send some hate mail for that uh, foul mouth at Saturday show, what we do. But yeah, we're all out of order. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> After 197 episodes of this, we're all a little bit gone. <laughs> Speak for yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies okay, and gentlemen, so, uh, up first this week comes from Ed. And, and it's like, yo, man, tell me about this HDMI capture stuff, because I'm looking for a low latency HDMI capture card. That can handle HDCP, which is like, I'd like to show <laughs> copy protection off of yes. it. Um, which it can be legitimate with like PS4s and stuff like that. Just, just like stream with them. So mm -hmm. he's like, um, I saw the Chinese stream cap, U3 copy cap, but I was worried it would not be as good as it could. Um, especially in latency, as much as I would like to try Blackmagic products, my wallet tells me that it won't happen in 2019. Um, maybe... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to which I'll retort. Yeah, but, but go ahead, Pedro, since you didn't put anything in there. Well, I I can add to what you're going to say that there are some twenty something pound, twenty-five dollar-ish devices available on eBay that will let you work around the whole HDCP deal. See, um, let me save you a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Basically, any HDMI splitter that's been made in the last decade is going to automatically strip that off, even though it, yeah. it, even if they don't say they do, they will. Um, so don't, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, don't buy a special <laughs> one like Peter just told you to do. <laughs> B, um, the best solution that I found on the cheap is totally not... Uh, plugging anything but if you go to letterschemecast.com look for like hdmi capture there's the u3 it's like 60 dollars american in freedom bucks that's as good as you're going to get for that price <laughs> it's usb3 it'll do 1080 60 over usb3 and whatever you can do with that um if you're looking for something that just works i mean because that's what we started i still have a singular one hooked up uh, and i have one hooked up to each of these boxes over here for return video because they work. But if you're looking for something that just works and you need more than one of them, black magic, they'll do it. Get on eBay. Yeah. Get patient. <laughs> you can find the like intensity pro 4k or the deck link mini 4k. They'll do 1080p 60. They'll even do 2160 mm -hmm. by 3840 by 2160. 30, just not 60. Uh, you can get those for about 150 bucks used. If you hate money, and you, you're going to 
afford them. I almost, ooh, I put it in Discord like two days ago. There was a ma mage well. There was a dual um, 1080p. They'll do like two 1080p streams for at 120, going mm. for like 200. That's what it ended up selling for. Those things start at $500 for 1080p <laughs> for mage well, but they're designed to run 24 seven. They're broadcast cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but they also work with the video for Linux. So, if you need something that can double as a webcam or take that type of input, you can't do that with a Black Magic card. Like, um, that's why I'm using the USB capture cards on this because, like, Chrome can't see a Black Magic device. It doesn't matter if it's on mm -hmm. Windows or Mac or anything like that. So, keep that in mind. Uh, anybody have anything to add to the class? Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> That's what I thought. All right. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a hard ass man. <laughs> That's one of the nicer things that have been said about me. Okay, this, this well, comes let's to talk us. about hardwood then. <laughs> All right, yeah. Jill, tell me about it. <laughs> okay. This comes from Don. Uh, there's also socks with the rubber or silicon nubs for, f for, uh, for grip on slippery surfaces like non-carpeted floor. On the upside, it's fun watching pets slide around on the floor when they chase their toys around the room. <laughs> now, this all comes from, I think we were talking in the pre-show after show, where, you know, anytime I wax floor clean up, I just have my socks yes. on. And I'll have that breathe, 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 <laughs> English, old man, like five to ten minute period of just having, because my entire house is hardwood, which is awesome, because... I'm mentally sometimes like six and I go sliding around until I almost wreck myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, go so put on some more truck, but engage traction control because you slide just a little bit, then you get brave, and then you're like, wee, doom. Um, going down like two flights <laughs> of stairs, not recommended. Yes, they do make traction sucks. Yes, um, I have several too. <laughs> losers wear them. No. <laughs> They work well. <laughs> you have traction socks and carpet, so you've already <laughs> confused me to the point to where there's no, yeah. It's like, well, I really want to stick to the carpet. Well, um. <laughs> but I have a kitchen that's what slippery are you oh, oh, I thought you were going to say you wear them in the shower. <laughs> no, in the kitchens and the bathroom. <laughs> you know, ironically, I use slippers to prevent myself from slipping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, I like socks. <laughs> I wear socks, man. Um, yeah, I, I have traction slippers. I mean, it, it all boils down to like responsibility. Also. Yeah. Uh, and I, I have too much takeoff area to not be yeah. more stuck to <laughs> yeah. the floor. <laughs> yes. But that is definitely You a can good, get a good run up. <laughs> I can get way I dude. <laughs> I can rollerblade in my basement. I know that for a fact. I've done it. Cool. <laughs> so Okay. Uh, children often mm -hmm. ask, are our pies learning? Well, they may be, because, uh, well, last week we had uh, that bit about uh, machine learning on the pie, and I mm -hmm. made it off, uh, like, an off remark. It's like, yeah, there are so many more powerful computers out there that you could be doing this on. Like an NVIDIA but, Jetson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, Fabio here says, it's like, machine learning on a Raspberry Pi is actually not only doable, but also hugely untapped world. Uh, classifiers can obviously be trained on more powerful machines, but once the model file is there, it's cheap to copy it to a Raspberry Pi and do predictions. Using OpenCV to do predictions through a relatively uh, simple Keras model actually does its job within 100 milliseconds on a Raspberry Pi 4. And it was like, oh yeah, after you have the file, you could just feed it to something and it'll run the predictions. So, yes, I forgot about that. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. Uh, cool. Yeah, I've used TensorFlow on the Raspberry Pi. In fact, that's how I learned how to use TensorFlow AI. So it was the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> but yeah, you create the model on a... Yeah. you know, massive workstation or send it out to a server and then when it spits out the file you just feed it to something and let it chew on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, predictive mm -hmm. learning. I mean AI. Uh. 
<laughs> That's kind of brilliant. <laughs> Machine learning. Yeah, well, yeah. listen, man, it sells better. All right, I can get more money. Yeah, from the startup, and I feel better about myself if I'm working on AI research. All right, so <laughs> beautiful people, we gotta mm -hmm. bounce out of here. So uh, mm -hmm. prepare yourself Aww. for a little bit of wubby music and some credits. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Yay! Yay, Ben! <laughs> Yay, Pedro! <laughs> Yay, Jill! You can say it, it's fine, it's okay! <laughs> Yay, executive producers! <laughs> and producers. All our beautiful producers and executive producers. We love you. Thank you so much Seriously. for all your support. <laughs> Every single one of you made this show possible, and we've been doing it for 197 episodes, so mm -hmm. thank you all mm -hmm. very, very much. You're welcome. Yeah, you are our family. <laughs> <laughs> you did this to yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Woo. We love you. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's really all Brad's fault. <laughs> it was always Brad.